Many's the time fairy have been sighted wearing red jackets, caps or shoes. In fact, red, along with green, appear to be the most favoured colours of fairy clothing. For us, red is a complicated colour. It's a high visibility colour. It seizes our attention. It triggers alertness and it can't be ignored. In short bursts, it can stimulate us in good ways, such as our appetite for food or love, but it can also signal danger and aggression. It is, of course, the colour of blood, life itself, and it follows death too. See what I mean? It's complicated. We know the fairy favour the colour red, but I wonder if their relationship with red is as confounding as ours? Or do they just go with the flow? I suspect they don't analyse and dissect things as much as we do. But did you know that the fairy have been known to appear before us, not in red, but as red? I've discovered a few rare and curious sightings of fairy not dressed in red, but as red which I'd like to share with you. The first comes to us from the west of Ireland. My father told me that one night he was crossing this road and he paused a moment and turned to the wall to adjust his shoe. When he turned back again, there was something running through the field beside him that was the size of a yearling calf and he could see by the moonlight that it was black. Well, it ran across the road just near where he stood and there was a sound like chains hanging off it. When it came to that rock with the bush on it next to the road, it stopped and stood staring at him and he could see there was a bright red light shining in its mouth. Then it just disappeared. Two curious tales now from Wales. Egbert Williams was a pious young gentleman of Denbyshire, then at school, and he was one day playing with three girls, one of whom was his sister. Near the stile, beyond Laneward House, they saw a company of fifteen or sixteen Coblenai engaged in dancing madly, They were in the middle of the field, about 70 yards from the spectators, and they danced something after the manner of Morris dancers, but with a wildness and swiftness in their motions. They were clothed in red and wore red handkerchiefs spotted with yellow wound around their heads. And a strange circumstance about them was that, although they were almost as big as ordinary men, yet they had unmistakably the appearance of dwarves, and one could call them nothing but dwarves. Well, presently one of them left the company and ran towards the group near the stile, who were directly scared thereby and scrambled in great fright to go over the stile. Barbara Jones got over first, then her sister, and as Williams was helping his sister over, they saw the Coblin eye closing upon them. Williams had barely got over the stile when the Coblin Eye's hairy hand came down heavy on the stile. He then stood leaning on it, gazing after them as they ran, with a grim, copper, red-coloured countenance and a fierce look. The young people ran to Laneward House and called the elders out, but though they hurried quickly to the field, the fairies had already disappeared. There is a well-authenticated tradition of a race of beings who, in the middle of the 16th century, inhabited the great dark wood in Merionethshire and who were called the Red Fairies. They lived in dens in the ground, had fiery red hair and long, strong arms, and it was known that they would steal sheep and cattle by night. There are cottages near the great dark wood with scythes in the chimneys which were put there to keep these terrible beings out. 
One Christmas Eve, a knight named Baron Owen headed a company of warriors who violently assailed the Red Fairies and found them to be flesh and blood. The Baron hung a hundred of them, but spared the women, one of whom begged hard for the life of her son. The Baron refused her prayer, whereupon she opened her breast and shrieked, This breast has nursed other sons than he, who will yet wash their hands in thy blood, Baron Owen. Not very long thereafter, the Baron was waylaid at a certain spot by the sons of the fairy woman and delivered her promise. Her sons washed their hands in his warm and reeking blood in fulfilment of their mother's threat. And to this day, that spot goes by the name of the Baron's Gate. There lived an old woman in the townland of Coroneri who was very poor. One day, when the wind was blowing fierce, she thought that her house would be blown in and she started to pray fast. In a moment, a little red fairy came to the door with a goose upon its arms. Here, take this goose, said he, and keep her well. It is a stormy season. The goose soon laid an egg and the woman fed well that day. So it was the woman's life prospered. She went on to live in such style afterwards that the people began to treat her very well. She got a maid to wait upon her and she got prouder and prouder every day. The only fault she found in the goose was that she used to make too much noise. Each time the goose laid an egg, it seemed to cackle louder than the time before. At last the old woman said that the goose had her driven mad. She threw the pan and the kettle and everything she could leave her hands upon at the poor goose. The stricken goose flew through the house and filled it with her cries. Suddenly, the door opened and the little red fairy who had brought the goose again appeared. He spoke a few angry words to the old woman and then picked up the bird and left. At once, the windows of her house were blown in and before long, she found herself as poor as she had been the day the red fairy brought her the goose. I hope you enjoyed this wee selection of true tales. We find here that while it is common to see Fay dressed in red, it is really uncommon to see those who are red. Red hair, red skin, red lights. Sure, it's possible the colour red has no significant meaning to the fairy, but it's interesting, don't you think, that each of these tales has a sting in its tail. You know, these aren't gentle, inspiring interactions. They ranged from disturbing to harsh and even murderous. Be sure to let me know in the comments your thoughts on the fairy's relationship with the colour red. I love making these videos and keeping these wonderful mysteries alive. If you'd like to see more of my videos, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so that you don't miss any future videos. Until next time, stay curious and be kind. Cheerio!